Hello everyone. You know what? Recently I had a conversation with the students of Tapni who were pursuing their BA honors and it was very enlightening for me. In the conversation I realized that Tapni is offering BBA honors and the kind of uh, opportunities what the students get whether it is uh, collaborations with international university or understanding the practical you know knowledge of uh, BBA it is very different. I am going to share this particular conversation with you. Hope this helps you because this conversation definitely will give you an understanding. Tapni BB Honors is the right choice for you. I have listed the chapters so you can directly start, you know, watching whether you want to, you know, learn about the admission process, the campus life, the academics or the placement. And in case if you have any questions, please make sure you comment. I would be more than happy to answer them. And I am very keen to know which other college you want us to host next. So let's get started. Welcome everyone to the episode which is Tapmi. We are covering Tapmi program today. So we have Himangi Pamecha with us, Krati Singh Dangi and Gautam Krishnamurti with us today from Tapmi. They are pursuing BBA honors with Tapmi. And before we start with the session, let's do a quick round of introduction. Let's understand their profile. Let's understand where exactly they come from. And see if it really kind of matches to the profile you have. And then you can look at their journeys. Okay, so without any further ado, let's start. Welcome everyone to the Campus Insider session. Tap Me program is what we are covering today. Let's start with the junior here, Himangi Pameja. Please introduce yourself to the students. Sure. So, hello everyone. My name is Himangi Pameja and I'm 18 years old. I've just started my second year of the B Honors program here at Tapi Bangalore. I have a commerce background and I had commerce with math. I completed my high schooling here in Bangalore itself. I've achieved 94.8% in my boards and 962 in 12. I chose the BBA program because of my varied interest in finance as well as marketing and this program allows me to explore these fields further. Well, TAPME is well-rounded program structure and strong industry connections were major factors in my decision to study here. Fantastic. Okay, thank you so much for introducing yourself. Uh, next, we have got... So, hi everyone, I'm Gautam Timurthy. I'm 21 years old and I'm currently a third year student at TAPME Bangalore for CMB Honours. So I did actually my 12th in PCM. I was from the science stream and initially I was inclined towards engineering. So I joined engineering college but later realized that wasn't where I was interested. So then I took a drop and I started exploring IPM and the BB options. So when I started exploring, I came through the IPM program and many other BPA colleges as well. So I did apply for IPMAT but unfortunately it did not go through and I got selected in many private colleges. And out of those, I chose TAPME because I felt the course curriculum at TAPME compared to the other BBA colleges was better. That's the reason I chose TAPME over the other colleges. Hi everyone, I'm Kati Dangi. I'm currently 19 and a 30 student at TAPME in the honors program. So in 11th and 12th, I had taken PCMB or M by PC. So that's like maths and bio both. And I decided not to appear for JE and E both. So then I decided, you know, I, I was not as looking forward to, you know, that expressing what my college options will be like you guys are, which is good. It was very last minute for me. Then I had written the IPM program and then I had applied to all the universities and colleges which uh, accept the IPM at law schools, etc. And then after all the offers, etc., I decided to go with TAP, the program structure and, uh, you know, we had a conversation with the faculty. So I felt that the basically the amount of work and basically what the TAP me is promising looked very good to me. So I decided to choose TAP me at that. Fantastic. So all of you have given me some different backgrounds. And now let's start with the questions. Okay. Uh, Himangi, starting with you. How did the journey which ended up at TAPMI, as in what were your options when you were in your 12th and when you started with looking at, you know, universities and institutes? How did you kind of finalize on TAPMI and what were your options? Now, as any other BBA aspirant, I had my set on the IPM program that in those, that was the golden star for all of us. And other than that, I had my set on uh, NMIMS Symbiosis Christ. And I was also looking at IFT Kakinada. They also had an IPM program there. Now, I started preparing for all my entrances properly in 12th grade. 11th, I was more focused on school because we had to get our foundation set right to appear well in 12th. 
So for all my entrances, I started in 12th, towards the end actually. And then I appeared, there was a two month long process for all these entrances. Two months of traveling one hour, two hours to those centers. That was one, the largest pain rather than actually appearing for them. Now I had actually cleared all the private colleges. I couldn't clear, I missed the cutoff by four or five marks for IPM Indoor and uh, Rota. Ranchi, again, same thing. And then for I am both in Jammu, Jipmar, I was waitlisted there. The waitlist didn't clear out. And for I, I actually cleared my waitlist in my first two weeks here at TAPME itself. But uh, comparing both the programs and everything, out of all four colleges, TAPME seemed to have the best structure. Plus, it had a really good alumni network. IFT is relatively new. And TAPME Bangalore has a support system of TAPME Mal as well. So that really pushed me to go for TAPME here. What exactly was your journey? What were your options? So when I had written my Atimats, I have written it for Indore. I have written Jipman and I have written for Trotter. So uh, for the IPMAT Indoor, I had cleared my cover around like 10 marks or something. But I had missed out on one of the sectional cutoffs. So I couldn't appear for Indoor. And uh, I had actually appeared for the Ranchi interview, but then it didn't work out. So I had my Ranchi and I had my interview like while I was in Tatmi and that didn't clear up. Then I got selected in, uh, I got offer letters from Nirma, Kfai, uh, Symbiosis, Bangalore campus and uh, one or two more in, I think, NMIMS. So these were like kind of the options I had along with Tatmi. And uh, after that, I decided to go over here because uh, when I when you look at the program structure, you see a lot of uh, basically similar uh, similarity with the program structure here and with the IPM programs are basically for the MBA years in the uh, IM indoors and IM you know other IM colleges. Then you see a lot of similarity in terms of programs, in terms of courses which are being offered. So that was something very interesting because. Uh, when you look at the foundation, it's the first year itself. The amount of courses which you would consider typically costs are very less as compared to, you know, basically uh, courses like psychology, anthropology, and uh, scientific thinking. So there were a lot of varied type of courses. And uh, if you're you know, especially planning on going abroad or even look at the current campus. So it's like these kind of courses are something which is, you know, taking off right now. Like along with what we call over here is like, we're not raising managers, we are raising so uh, socially responsible managers for society, not just for corporate. So these kind of programs are very in tune with what the world is thinking forward. So hence, I decided to go with that. Fantastic. Then what exactly has been your journey? So I also gave the, uh, most IPMs in my year. I gave I, IPM Indoor, IPM Rota, IPM Ranchi, all of them. And I gave Jipmat as well. And again, coming to Indoor, I cleared the overall cutoff, but one of the sectional cutoffs, I couldn't clear it. And coming to Rothak, I missed it by two or three marks. So I, I couldn't go to the interview of any of them. And coming to the private colleges, I'd, I'd applied for NMIMS, Symbiosis, Christ, and TAPME. These are the only four colleges I applied for. And I got into all four of them. But when I started comparing them, I realized TAPME's structure, course. First of all, what TAPME was offering was a four-year program, which none of the other colleges are offering. This was something unique about TAPME. And then, as Kratyan Wangir already mentioned, looking at the course curriculum, it was far different from, the, from a normal BBA program. And it was inclined what the industry currently wants, not what a normal BPA degree has. And again, TAPME is a very well-established college. It's been running for the last 40 years in Manipal and has an 8,000 plus academic base. So considering all these reasons, I felt I should choose TAPME. And that's the reason I chose TAPME over all these other colleges. Okay. All right. So absolutely got, you know, the journeys, what you guys have mentioned. Now, my, my question, you know, uh, will be in regards with the admission. Can you take us through the admission process? Himangi, can you please help us with what exactly was the admission process, which you actually kind of, uh, you know, went through for the program? Now, uh, there's actually an option. So TAPME, they offer their own entrance test, MET. I didn't give that. You can also apply through your IP math scores. So I submitted my IPM scores and my JIP math scores. That got me through the first round. And then we had our interview. Now the interview, they have MP and PI. You're supposed to give a micro presentation. They've briefed a bit on the topics uh, on their official website as well. And you're also supposed to submit a statement of purpose. Stating why you're uh, eligible at TAPME and a little bit about yourself. That gives the interviewers a little perspective about who you are and sort of ask you questions there. On. So they don't really rely on your test scores. They don't really judge the uh, candidate that way. Your main uh, crack, how you can crack TAPME is through the interview. How confident you are and how well you can answer the questions that the panelists ask you. Okay. All right. Uh 
anybody want to kind of add anything to that? Do you think anything which is missing, Krati, Gautam? No. Okay. Uh, if I understand correctly, the process for getting into the BBA and IPM is the same. Am I right in saying that? The process is the same, but I think there's a separate waitlist for both of them. The admission okay. process is the same, but then there's a separate waitlist for both the colleges, for both and, the programs. Okay. In that case, for example, if you are applying to TAPMI for an IPM, okay, would the interview process would be the same. So in case if you crack the interview process, there is a chance of you getting into IPM. And if not, then you would definitely get into BBA. Am I right in saying that? No, it's not necessary because suppose you're putting the waitlist for IPM. You might not even clear BBA because not everyone who applies to the IPM program applies for BBA. There are different, some students only apply for BBA, some apply only for IPM. So it's not necessary that if you clear that, if, if, you, if you clear that, you will clear this as well. It's two separate lists which is released. Okay, two separate lists. So is it a possibility yeah. where a student applies for a BBA program? However, the student is being pitched an IPM program because the student is good when it comes to the interview. Have have you that kind depends. of came across something like that? No, as of now, there's nothing in that which has happened. Okay, which has not happened. Okay, fair enough. Now, when it comes to the admission is concerned, once the admission kind of happens, uh, we start with the with the first year, okay, which is the academics, all right? Let's see if we have any kind of questions here. All right. Now, when it comes to academics, the first year, how exactly the first year looks like? Uh, we'll start with you, Hemangi. What exactly the first year looks like when it comes to academics are concerned? Now, the first year is called the foundational year. It sets your foundation straight. And you would expect to see only management courses, what you might see in commerce in 12th grade. But that is not the case. We were given subjects like anthropology for managers in the first semester itself. And then we had scientific thinking, culture and context. All these mind-boggling subjects, they really test how well you can process information and apply it in a management sort of way. Now, more than the management courses itself, these courses were the hardest to clear off for my batch. And then we have the foundational subjects like economics, math, accounts. We have management. We also have uh, SRME, Sustainably uh, Responsible Managerial Ethics. Then we learn about ethics and the sustainable part. So TAPNI is actually one of the main greener colleges here in India. And uh, yeah, it's all very well-rounded. You won't get to see all hardcore commerce subjects here. So they're not preparing you only for management as such. They're preparing it for anything and everything that you might see five years later or 10 years later in the future. Fantastic. Uh, Gautam, Krati, uh, I think you would be able to kind of shed some light on the second and the third year programs, as in the subjects what you what you kind of study. Second year, if you, would, you can uh, cover the second year subjects. Yes. So the second year, basically, you get more, you know, basically what uh, managerial or commerce subjects are. So you get macroeconomics, you get statistics, OB, marketing, so you get exposure to all these things. Because at the end of the second year, you're supposed to make a choice on what your specialization is going to be in year three. And because it's a four year program, year three and year four. So the structure is such that in year three, basically, we are now following a two major policy instead of a major and a minor in any other institution. You are shifted to a two major policy. So in year three, you chose like basically two streams. So I am from a finance, I have chosen finance and economics, for example. So I'll be studying along with some four subjects, which are common for all, which are the general subjects. I'll be studying four subjects from the economics basket, from the four subjects from finance basket. And after getting exposure to both, both these choices of mine, at the end of year three, I'm supposed to make a choice of which of these streams I want to major in. So year four is going to be basically general subjects and whichever stream I've chosen to do a major in. So it's a 14 plus four structure. So 14 subjects of the major and four subjects of basically in year three, another stream which you have chosen. And in year four, this is like one option that you can go to study for. And this is called a corporate line. So you have at least uh, around four options right now. So either you can go to first studying subjects or you can, you know, if you decide you want to do a PhD or you want to go to the research side of it. So you can basically take up research where you will be actually working on a research question, research paper of your own, along with a faculty mentor, which you'll have, along with the other basically basic subjects or courses you will be going to study. So you can decide to research in marketing or finance. Then third track is entrepreneurship. 
So after basically at the end of this track, if you're interested in business or having a startup of your own, you're supposed to pitch your startup to there's a panel. Uh, I'm not quite recalling the name, but you are basically to pitch the panel over there. And if your idea is decided a little bit viable or, you know, something which is interesting, which you can work on. In the fourth year, you will be working on entire business model, how your operations going to look like, how you're going to launch your basically product or business which you're starting. And at the end of it, if there's another going to be presentations again, if they decide it's a viable future. So they're going to fund your basically business startup. So you get, you graduate with a, basically your own business as a own, along with funding, which you'll be running. And one of the four track is basically you can choose to basically do your masters with the partner universities uh, outside India. So you can either go to basically we have partnerships with Southampton and uh, UK London. We have recently closed a partnership with Deakins University, Australia. So at the end of third year, you can choose to basically go outside and do your master's. So obviously there is a basically eligibility criteria like in terms of cutoffs. But then you can directly get in from here. If you basically clear those basic cutoffs, you don't need to appear for the interview process, etc. You can directly continue to do master's there. So these are sort of four options which you have at the end of third year. Wow, that was very detailed. Uh, Gautam, is anything left to add there? Well, I think she has covered everything. She's almost covered everything. She's almost covered everything. Yeah. Fantastic. So with what you guys, you know, Krati, what you have mentioned, and I think, uh, you know, Gautam, if you would like to possibly add there. Uh, so if I understand correctly, TAPME also has international collaborations is what I understand with this. Okay, so if any student who has the aspiration of, uh, you know, studying with an international university that also can be covered with TAPME. Correct? Okay. So, uh, go ahead. So, as of now, as Krati told, you have tie up with two universities, Southampton and Beacons University. So, it's the GPA criteria. If you have above a particular GPA, then you get a direct admission to that university. You can go pursue an MS program there. That's how it's currently structured. So, you already signed MOUs with two universities and we're signing with one more in France and one more in US, which will be done in the next six to seven months. Which is very interesting. It kind of clearly states that it will be a very good option if you are looking at, you know, aspiring something uh, for an international university and which is, you know, which is very interesting. All right. Now, when it comes to academics are concerned, we definitely looked at what kind of, you know, uh, subjects you guys study. Now, let's look at the test structure. Okay, here again, starting with you, what exactly how the semester looks like? Looks like is it a you know a, a three month semester? Is it a six months? How does it look like? So it's a generally a four month semester. Here mainly we'll have our mid sems and our end sems. Now in between these months we'll have a number of quizzes and all the weightages the courses might differ in that. We have uh twenty percent projects as well, twenty to thirty percent. We have our quizzes five to ten percent and our faculty might choose to assign any other activities or any other sort of assignments therein based on their own flexibilities. But yeah, quizzes, midterms, and, and our projects, they mainly cover most of the test structure. Fantastic. So, uh, Gautam, if you would like to add, when it, when, it, you know, when a student, like I am a student right now in 12th standard, okay, if I have to look at a, a course, can you kind of just break it down for a student in terms of how exactly the first year, second year with the breaks would look like for them? Okay, so the first year starts sometime in August and or September and the first semester goes up to December. Then generally after the first semester, you have a 10 to 15 day break. Then you have the second semester. And after the second semester, basically after year one, there's a social internship, which is there for two months where the student goes and does it in any NGO in his preferred location. So this, so in tap me, you generally get breaks only for internship. There's no break as such which you get. You get a break of one or two weeks after the internship and then you have to join back. So then you come back to you come back to the college, you have your semester three, again semester three, and then you have a break of ten week ten days in between. And then SEM4. After SEM4, we have a sales internship, which is again a two months internship, which is basically to understand what's the ground reality. Only when a person knows how to sell things, he can go later and do something in the corporate. So that's the reason we have an eight-week sales internship. Then we have a third year where we specialize, as Kathy mentioned, is a double major program. We specialize in it. So then we have our SEM5 and SEM6. And after SEM6, we have a corporate internship, which is a four months internship. So people who want to exit with a BBA degree, exit after SEM6. And people want to continue to year four, do the corporate internship, which, which comes from April to July. And once that is done, you have your semester seven, semester eight. This is how the, uh, this is how the structure is designed. 
Very nice. And one thing which, uh, you know, when you mentioned that there's no break apart from there is there is internship. Okay. So if I am a student looking at, I would definitely want to understand that if I'm actually leaving my city and, you know, going uh, to study, are there any breaks as in, do you get Diwali breaks? Or... Yeah, we get a Diwali. We have breaks, but it's not a very long break because after every semester, we have a break of 10 to 15 days. And apart from that, we get the break and the timetables are a bit flexible. Even with a 75% attendance policy, the students can go home when they feel like. So that is not an issue. 75%, I think one of the uh, most lenient attendance which I have heard up till now. Uh, 85 is something up till now which has been very standard. So yeah, this is, this is you know, if I have to look at attendance being, uh, you know, students will look at, I think this is good. Let's take up some questions, okay? Um, one of the students is asking about the fee structure. So, uh, Krati, would you kind of just focus a little bit on the fee structure and if you can kind of remember the numbers, would you be able to give us some numbers? So, basically, for the academic side, you have 3.75 lakhs per year, fees, which is you have to pay in the month of like basically, or uh, if you start, it's you have to pay it one time yearly. So, if you're starting a semester in August, September, generally you have to finish paying the fees by June, July. The notification keeps coming. Uh, in terms of concessions, you have basically a student aid and a loan policy. I'm not much aware of the details, but you can connect with the admissions department. They'll give you out basically your details of how to, you know, pay in terms of EMIs or if you are going to take up a student loan. Another thing which you can is basically you have a scholarship uh, policy. So after you get into TAPNI, uh, we have a yearly scholarship. So at the end of the first year, there are different brackets, right? So the top, uh, basically top 10 people in your batch, there'll be uh, basically 35% of fee reduction. Then top 12, uh, from 11 to 20, there's a 20%. And then from 21 to 30, there is a 30, uh, 10% basically of the fees you get in the form of your scholarship. So students, you know, who are interested in something of the sort can really rigor hard and then book your way. And I think over here, all three of us are scholarship holders. So at different brackets, so all three of us are scholarship holders. So you have that opportunity as well. Fantastic. And that is very, very nice. Uh, so if a student is looking forward to kind of, so this particular scholarship, what you guys have received, is it a need-based scholarship or was it merit-based? It is a merit-based scholarship. So basically on the uh, GP and CGP, which you're holding, it's a merit-based scholarship. Okay. Uh, just few questions more, uh, you know, for around the scholarship. So normally what happens in other universities are, as per, you know, the information I have, every year you will have to apply for the scholarship. Is it the same which is applicable for me as well? Uh, no, basically once you are in the top 30 or whatever brackets have been created for your particular batch, you're automatically eligible for the scholarship. So you don't need to apply as such. That is interesting and that's, that's I think, very helpful because that kind of gives you an assurance. So you don't have to reapply every year. All right, great. Now, let's look at the other questions what we have got. Is there any cutoff grade-wise for the IBDP program to get into TAPNI? Awesome. I'm not sure what program is talking about IDP. Okay, okay. So a little clarity on uh, the question would be helpful, Adwait. All right. Are there two programs, BB and IPM? Is the entrance same? Anand, we just answered that particular question. Yes, there are two programs with TAPMI. One is the BBA Honours, which is with uh, Bangalore. And there is IPM, which is with Manipal. Am I right, Krati? Yes, perfect. Spot on. Yes, it's spot on. And when it comes to the admission process is concerned, the admission process is similar. But when you apply, there are two different wait lists which would be coming. Okay, however, the decision for your admission based on your BBA honors or your IPM would be based on the personal interview. Okay, uh, now this is actually an interesting question. Does TAPMI accept SAT or ACT? Yeah, so TAPMI does accept your SAT scores. I'm not sure if they have ACT acceptance as of now, but SAT is definitely absolutely happening. SAT is something which they do accept, even you know, I was aware of that so. Yes, they do accept the SAT scores. Uh, when it comes to the uh, academics are concerned, okay, how difficult is the examinations which is held? I mean, that is something which I'm sure uh, students would definitely want to understand. Is it difficult to crack? Because looking at the kind of numbers you guys gave me, the percentage, you know, you all are good in its own way. Okay, so is it that you feel that there's a lot of competition and uh, you know, being on top is difficult. I just want a little perspective on that. Starting with you, Krati. So, TAPNI has a relative grading policy. So, basically, your 
final grades are not determined on what marks you achieve. It's basically on your position with respect to your batch. So anyone achieving somehow like 60 out of 100 can be a A grader. Okay. So it's like that. And uh, I won't say you need to be academically smart to basically be on top because basically the evaluation structure is not more on theoretical knowledge, but more on practical application. So for example, in year one, as Himangi would know, she had her wisdoms in economics in the form of her basically she had to set up a business and generate revenue. So that was her mid -sem. So you basically, every year, you have a clash of corporate. It's an event. So over there, you set up your basically business stall. So after learning all the market structure and pricing policies, all the concepts which you have learned, you have to go over there, you have to survive in the market and you have to earn a profit. And you will be graded according to basically other practices like your accounting, your sustainability, what kind of, you know, what kind of approach you had to it. So a lot of the evaluations are structured in the same way. So we had evaluations in the form of creating a documentary in uh, culture and context. Uh, we had the same evaluation in economics as well. So a lot of the evaluations are not just pen paper exams, which you would think about. The faculty has basically, you know, all the kind of flexibility on how they want to structure these evaluations. But uh, as so for basically passing a course, so I'll just explain the evaluation system. So you need to earn a 40% in the NSM exam. Uh, uh, you have to earn about 40% in the NSM examination. And overall, uh, considering NSM and internal examination, you need to have an overall 40% as well. So suppose if you, you know, you get a 40% in your NSMs, but overall, when you add it up with your internal scores, you're not clearing that 40 out of 100 marks. So you need to basically give the NSM exam. So you basically you write your NSMs. After that, if you're not able to clear due to any reasons, you have a makeup exam after each semester. So you get a second chance over there. And then suppose if you're not able to clear it again in that, uh, basically in that makeup exam. So next year, when that course is going to be offered to your juniors, you get, uh, you have a chance to reattempt the entire course over there. So you again, give your midterms, uh, your product, uh, projects, etc. I don't think that's to be repeated. That gets scaled up. And then you give your NSM again. And basically, TAPMI tries to provide as many opportunities as possible for you to clear a course or a subject. Very, you know, very detailed. Uh, do you feel, Hemangi and Gautam, if there is anything which is left and you would possibly want to add on? I would just say that TAPMI doesn't focus on book knowledge, like how it's it advised you to study exams. They focus more on practical knowledge. They just see what you need in the industry to survive once you pass out from here. They focus on that. So even in classes, it's not a professor doesn't come and teach anything. We follow the case study type of learning. So he gives us a case and then explains through the case. So that is one thing which many other colleges don't follow in the BBA program. They always do it in the MBA level. But TAPMI is implementing that at the BBA level, which I feel is something unique. And they always focus on practical learning more than just bookish knowledge. Okay. One uh, more thing I'd like to add is about our internships here. Now, for my social internship for my batch this time, we found a way to integrate one of our courses in our internships. We have this course called Design Thinking. And in our internship, in our respective NGOs, we were supposed to find a problem and solve it using a proper model and using prototyping. Now, we were also supposed to present this to an external evaluator as well as our internal evaluators. Now, for a batch of 181 students, they managed to do this in two days with around 22 panels by calling out industry experts in this sector itself and also by coordinating with the other departments. Now, it was a very cutthroat sort of evaluation that we had. We had to sit there for one hour, 15 minutes, present our internship. And if we had faked our way through, they'd find it out. There's many people who have to reappear as well. And what I gathered through all the examinations we had in our first year, like creating documentaries, by communicating with various targets of people and by performing in the economics fest, by selling our product, it's basically they're trying to test how well you're able to talk to people and how well you're able to convince them about your product and well how well you're able to connect with people at the end of the day. One more thing I would, go ahead, thing I would like to add is that, you know, uh, by explaining the system of evaluations and while we're talking about it, so there will be, basically you enter with a set mind that uh, basically failure is a bad thing. If you fail, what will happen? That is definitely going to break in the first year because TAPMI is nothing but aspiring to make an, like basically it's excellence, right? So they they are never going to lower your standards to meet your things. So there has been like, I have failed like two courses. Mangi, I'm not sure about you. Gautam has also, you have basically at the end of four years, there will come a position where you are at a low point. But it's such a normal thing that you basically, if you have failed, you have to just get back and go and do it again. You'll get used to this a lot. So basically the whole 
structure of everything that is so that's such a very good thing then because you're already experienced failure aware because it's such a cutthroat kind of competition as well as you mentioned her social internship presentations for sales internship you had basically senior managers from the corporate from actual companies who have come to evaluate what work you have done for a company right so these sort of things they keep happening what i'm finding very interesting about the coursework about the information you guys are i i kind of giving that understanding the fact that there is no bookish knowledge you guys somewhere are getting prepared for the corporate world a very good life skill it is which actually teaches you know that's what we keep on telling students you know parents tend to kind of uh, tell this they don't give up it's okay you need to keep on trying and that's exactly what really makes a manager a good manager and this is something which is which is very unique to what i have heard up till now okay now let's talk about the faculty okay you know the faculty every college every university has its own people who would be now studying possibly 10 years down the line they would remember that one particular professor who was very strict or who was very lenient how exactly the vibe in me is uh, i am very certain you know all the universities are good when it comes to their faculty is concerned but what exactly the experiences you have had okay gotham starting with you you have experienced it good 3 years now So coming to the faculties, some of the faculties have come down from Manipal. It's a Tappi Manipal, so they have a good experience of five to ten years teaching MBA students. And apart from that, the faculties, it's a very strict policy that you they only recruit faculties who have a degree from a tier one college. So so all the, and coming to the faculties, they are all like they teach you things in such a way that they make it easy to understand. Like if I'm I'm from the science background, so maybe initially year one accounts economics is very tough for me. but the faculty start on the subjects from the scratch that was easy for a science student also to understand such concepts so that is one thing the faculty is not discriminate you like which background you come from they just feed everyone uh, their job is to teach everyone from the basics so that is one thing about the faculty is here that they don't discriminate much on which background you come from and all those and apart from that they are always there for you like even outside the class they mentor you and they help you in other parts of life as well so they're always there so this is something which you might not find in other colleges they just teach the subjects and go but here some of the faculties have a bonding with the students where they help them even apart from studies and all those so that is one thing uh, which is unique about tapmi and apart from that all the faculties are highly qualified and they are really supportive come into the faculties fantastic uh, anything krati himangi would like to add now talking about how uh, what are the faculties are in the first semester itself we actually had faculties who were allotted to certain fast groups so fast group consists of 10 people and each faculty they had two fast groups under them so to all 20 students they're under one faculty and they can approach them for anything any sort of difficulty that was facing be it an academic campus life hostel any anything any issues they have so it's they they're always there for you and if you have a good bonding with them if you're talking to them addressing like asking certain doubts or sort of keeping a bonding with them you don't really face any issue there in that section that is really nice uh, now let's i think we we spoke about this academics very much at length okay now let's look at the campus life okay campus life is a very integral part of a student's life because it kind of gives you a sneak peek in terms of how to actually handle relations public re- you know Uh, how to manage people as managers i think that's what is a skill which is really looked at and uh, to an extent the campus life the festivals which happens in the campus life kind of gives you a lot of learning now let's talk about the campus life what kind of campus you know tapmi has and what exactly the festivals are we'll cover one at a time starting with you himangi what exactly the campus looks like now we have a wide eight e acre course now this is mahi vanglo again we're talking about so there's not only tap me here there's several other departments like mit smi you have dlhs many others here uh, the hostels to zolo say they also celebrate many festivals so other than uh, institutions as well the hostels also take part in celebrating festivals and again the campus is really big there's a lot of amenities here we've also opened up marina here it's like a huge club there's many amenities there as well there's a three floor gym there will be a swimming pool there'll be put up many things there that i'll leave for your people to find out and then again all the events that we have 
uh, all the uh, departments are allowed to take part in them. We can volunteer there in as well. So there's never any issue where you're facing, oh, there's not many activities happening. There's a lot of exposure you get here. We had a TEDx event recently. Gotham was the main coordinator there. I volunteered for that as well. So it's there's always something happening every week, every month. You'll find some department having hosting an event and there's a lot of fun we'll be having. There'll be a lot of DJ nights, many things to experience here. So it's an open campus. It's great here. Okay. Uh, you have given a very good, you know, peak in regards with the campus that is something happening all the time. Uh, I think the senior here, uh, Krati or Gautam, both of you can give us, starting with you, Krati, what about the festivals? What kind of festivals uh, Tapi host and how many festivals Tapi host? And what exactly student community has a role there? So basically, there is no limit set limit uh, of how many festivals or basically a calendar which you have. Because, okay, there are going to be fests which are going to be department level, but they encourage participation from all departments. So there's going to be something which your MIT engineering department is hosting. And you can always participate over there. And there are going to be fests which are going to the whole Mahi level where everyone is incorporated. So at the whole Mahi level, basically you have different kinds of festivals, Onam, Ganpati, Navratri. So each time uh, there is a department which will take a lead for a certain, host a certain festivals and all the basically students of the department will help in conducting that. At Tami level, basically every year we have finalized the structure. We have a GLC, which is the Global Leadership Conference, which is a little more from the professional side of it. In terms of culture, we... Uh, we also have a management fest called Adhikla. And then we have a cultural fest called Kala, which uh, we had a first uh, Kala in the February of this year, which is a three-day event. So basically, the rules and everything keeps changing. But, you know, it's like you all, you have a varied mix of fests. We have a cultural fest. We have a management fest. You have basically GNC. So we you have corporates coming in. So we have it on the professional side. So everything keeps happening. There are like two to three months which goes into planning, which you always can be a part of. It's a very happening campus to be in. Gautam, would you like to add something to that? I mean, since it's a university campus, there are eight, eight to nine colleges here. So every week there's just something happening. Some of the other college has a management fest or some hackathon, some cultural fest. So every week you just go down, there's something happening here, something there. So it's a happening campus. And as Emily mentioned, Zolo also keeps organizing some event. Any function, they organize something. So every week there's something happening. So that's one really good thing about having a university campus when there are many colleges under the same roof. It's a, it's a very happening campus. It's a very happening campus and that kind of, uh, you know, very much to be, to be, you know, I can experience with what exactly you guys are mentioning. Now, let's talk about something which is the clubs, okay? Because academics, I'm sure they definitely want you to learn more on the practical side. That's what I can get a picture of it with the information you guys have given to me. Okay, but the personal growth, the personal interest of a student is also extremely important. So do you have or TAPME provides option for clubs or committees or I don't know what exactly the, the you know, uh, the word you, you use, but what exactly options do a student get? Okay, so coming to the different clubs and committees, we have the Student Executive Council, which consists of the class representatives and all those. So we have two to three class representatives two class representatives for each section and they are basically the coordinators between the students and the faculty. Anything the faculty has to communicate to the students or between students and faculty, they are the point of contact. So this is what the Student Executive Council does. And next, coming to the corporate engagement team is one of the most important committees in the college. So this is the this is the connection between the students and the corporate. So we take care, me and Himangi are part of the corporate engagement team. So we take care of the internships, placements, and as Kirti mentioned, we also have a global leadership conference every year. So we are responsible for all the different events. Basically, anything between the corporate and the students, we are responsible for that. And then coming to the other clubs, there's a cultural committee, which hosts the uh, cultural fest and any small event or function happening in the campus, they're responsible for that. And then coming to the student welfare community, student welfare committee, they're responsible for any issue related to the mess or the students are facing the hostel, they are responsible for that. Then we have the ESL, which is the entrepreneurship cell. So they they have these events every year where students come and pitch their ideas and we have investors coming to our campus. And recently, even one or two of our one of one or two of the students were funded for their ideas. So that uh, and then we have Phoenix, which is a finance and economics forum of TAPME. Here we are in this committee as well. We conduct events every year when the budget is released. We have a panel discussion. And there was also uh, 
We also started three things under that, which was called the Shaptai Darpan. Basically, in that, we used to send newspaper. We used to, there's a group of students who used to read the newspaper and, and give a summary of that daily to the students. And then we used to focus on one industry and send emails to the students based on that. And then apart from that, I think these are the clubs and committees. I missed on anything. Does yeah. anybody can add on that? Can't really recall that there's any other club or company. Anything you would want to add? Do you think it's covered? Everything is covered? Or you want to add something to that? I'll just add a like, small thing. So basically, you have a lot of options in when deciding in a club or committee, like what kind of things you watch, which you want to pursue. All right. But even if that is not there, you can always start your own club at that point. So, like, I have started a couple in the So, we have uh, started a dance club in Tapu. And there are various other students who have started a basically, you know, NACM, which is the finance club at me. Phoenix was also, again, started by students, which is the financial and economic club at me. So, if you are, you know, you want to do something new, you want to do something on your own, you can always start a club. You would just need a big faculty mentor for a club and, and there is certain requirements. But once you've got a club, you can always recruit people to be a part of your club. And in Tapmi, there's a little distinction between committees and clubs. So you can always be a part of, you know, one club and one committee at any given point of time. So you have a lot of options which you want to explore. That That's really good. Now, very important now after discussing the whole thing, the last leg, the last important part which everybody wants to kind of look at is the placements okay though for an undergrad student placement is something which a lot of you know people would say that it doesn't really matter because it would kind of give you a good placement once you do your masters okay but still it is a very important aspect for a lot of students who would be idly uh, you know listening to us right now or would be watching the session later on okay so let's look at the placement cell and what exactly they have to offer. Uh, who would be able to give us a detailed information? Gautam, Krati, Himangi, you can, you know, whoever feels that would be able to answer can just take up the question. So I would like to start and then Himangi and Gautam can continue. So TAPMI has been positioned as equivalent of an MBA program. The B honors program is positioned as an equivalent to an MBA. So and that is something which industries, uh, industry agreed. So this time when we had a serious internship over there, so, you know, expectations of a bachelor's BBA program is like quite low in terms of work, etc. But there have been so many instances and we have actually got callbacks from the corporates and said that they want to hire again. Because the kind of work results or work output and the dedication which our students have put in, they have recognized that, okay, this kind of, you know, level of communication or work which they have done, it's really excellent and, you know, at par with what, at par and exceeding what expectations they have. So similar approach as uh, so in the placement as well, the packages and uh, the kind of roles and job opportunities which we are looking at is a little bit different from what other BBA programs which will be offering. Right. So I let leave it to Gotham to continue with the package and basically the aspiration details of our placement club. Thank you. Yes, uh, Gautam, go ahead. So coming, comparing our program to a normal BBA program, generally normal BBA program, he might just directly go get placed or do one small internship before the final placement. But mm -hmm. in our program, we have a social internship. So a person already gets exposed to the, not an industry, but a small NGO. At least he knows what exactly is happening in our society. And then he goes for an eight-week sales internship where he's exposed to the industry. He knows how tough it is to sell a product. He's exposed to the ground reality. So by this, a student has a good understanding of the industry and he's ready for the corporate. And this this is something which does not happen in other BBA colleges. So we are already one step ahead of other BBA colleges. When I mean, at, when you see in the corporate point of view, they have an advantage here. They pick students from TAPME. And then coming to the third year internship, or the corporate internship, it is a four-month internship, which even an MBA program only offers a two to three-month internship. But here we have a four-month internship where we are exposed to different fields depending on our specialization. So by the time we come to the end of the fourth year, we have had an internship of two, two months plus two plus four, almost eight months of internship. And then we're getting placed, which no BBA or MBA program would offer to you. So this is something which is unique about our program. And of course, more than classroom learning or what, however practical the teaching is in college, unless you go to the industry and experience what exactly happens, you won't get that knowledge. So compared to even MBA program, I feel we guys would have more experience than them. So that is one of the advantages of studying in here. You get experience the industry more than any other BBA or MBA program. And to talking about, to, yeah. To add on to the point Gautam made, so it's not just like internship is again 
at how much ever large it is it's just a small portion of it so aside from the industry exposure during the internships we have life project opportunities which is being offered by the placement cells so uh, the way you can you know work on a project with the company for one or two months over a duration then aside from that again you have you know conferences like global leadership conferences like this year we are hosting it in october we have ceos from ta head panels coming from various industries to come and talk over here so you have exposure to that uh, then you have basically guest lectures we have a series of guest lectures which is happening every week so at any given point of time in any month you'll be at, at least hearing at least two people from the industry giving you a talk uh, and it's been various later you always have basically an exposure and secondly an opportunity to network and connect to these industry professionals but i can continue what you are saying so come into the package is and everything we are also not really sure what it's going to be we can only give an expected figure because we are the first batch of students but our expectations and how things are going we we are confident that we'll be at par with the tier 2 mba college come into the final placement internships so this is how we are expecting looking at the response of the last year sales internship because prati and me and most of us in our batch have actually interned with mba students from tier 2 and tier 1 colleges and we have got the same role same stipend as that so when it's possible in a sales internship going ahead as well i feel not, not at the end of third year but at the end of fourth year we would be at par with an mba student at least of a tier 2 college absolutely got it you made me very curious now with the word stipend okay just out of curiosity what is the stipend do we we look at so during the sales internship you can't compare with an mba student because this is just a sales internship or internship yeah so the stipend we have a minimum stipend policy of 15000 for the okay. sales internship okay. so it ranges and so that was the minimum policy our average stipend for year 2 sales internship was 23000 all right okay uh which is again uh very interesting and uh, i'll be very honest with all these episodes we have done we have covered an mims we have covered uh, all the iims uh up till now there was never an amount which was quoted for stipend when you guys are doing internship and i think uh, this is very interesting and a very good uh, uh, you know knowledge for me as well when it comes to information now let's wrap this particular session with something which i want to ask starting with you himangi you've been quiet for a long time okay if a student is applying for you know just just sum up your experience with why you should be aiming tap me what exactly you know if you want to join tap me what what should be the reason and uh, what exactly your experience have been you know just sum it up for the students sure. so now if you're applying to tap me you shouldn't come with a mindset of like my dad was in business so i want to just go into business now if you say that in the interview you're automatically out you should know why you're applying you should have some sort of sense to why you want to do a management oriented degree maybe some sort of story or anything of that sort but you shouldn't be completely clueless because once you enter tap me and if you're clueless you're gone <laughs> because it's cut throat here they're not preparing you for any sort of academic sort of you know graduating with a just a degree or graduating with all sorts of knowledge on how to face the real world that you're actually going to fall into after 3 or 4 years so that's why they like to follow a sort of mba sort of structure your classes are also 1 hour 15 minutes they're preparing us for 1 hour 30 minute mba classes in the future and all the tests that we'll have all the journeys you'll have here it will not be the same as what you might see in nmims in mrs or christ all your friends there might be having fun but here you'll be cramming up for three quizzes you might have the next day now so my journey in applying for tap me it was all around the course structure here again they're not just an academic course it's preparing you for the real corporate world which is what we all all three of us want to get into ultimately right? fantastic i think you have summed up very lovely uh, himangi thank you uh, gautam so i would just like to say this that the course is very rigorous it will be a bit challenging initially because when a person comes to 12 he's just used to reading books and just marking up and going for the exam that is not something that will work in tap me because if you know that you're going to fail for sure so you will have to try to understand the concepts initial 2 3 months will be very tough for everyone irrespective of people's the batch if you was school top or whatever it is it will be initially tough and all dean is very clear however challenge however challenge the courses he's not ready to reduce the standards like right? this the standards going to remain even though the entire batch will let them fail i'm not going to reduce the standard of the program he is very clear on that 
so that is something which is very clear and they they also are very particular about discipline which they are very particular about your dressing etiquettes and all those and they expect you to wear formals on all any interaction the corporate expect you to be in formals and that is something they train you initially anyways later once you go to the corporate you have to be in formals and also that is something these are small small things which staff me trains you in which other colleges might not train you but one thing is very clear as among it all nmms and bosses might be a bit lighter and you might be able to enjoy more in that but i feel if you struggle in these four years it will be helpful down the line after that because that is something even i could see in our sales internship we were interning with mba students there were no bba students in the organizations where we went so that is something which we could see which is unique about our program wow that is that is good the let's let's hear it from you so uh, i think himangi and gautam have summed it beautifully so i just like to say that you have just exposed to so many things that trust me even if you are someone who have not you know not yet uh, answered all the life questions or what you want to do you will find your way over here you will find your sense of direction and with the faculty support and you know interacting with video batch with all the different kinds of profiles which they are aiming for position or uh, basically where they want to do so all these sorts of interaction with the industry with the batch mates with faculty it will basically give you a sense of direction for your own self of what you want to do what you don't want to do so it's a very supportive environment once you enter into it once you and it will teach you how to survive in any kind of situation fantastic wow uh with this session what we have done today i can definitely tell you that next time if a student comes and ask me a question related to tap me i have a lot of information to provide that particular student and i hope whoever would be watching this particular session it's helpful for you know for all of you because this particular episode is summing up the life at tap me for the four years what you would be spending and uh, thank you himangi and gautam for taking out time and giving us so much information which will help our students and let's ask our students students i hope it was helpful a quick raise of hand would definitely give us an idea helpful tha wow that is very that is very nice that is very sweet that is very sweet thank you so much for being a part of the session thank you so much for taking out time and uh, doing this particular session for us gautam himangi and krati all the best for your years ahead and do well and uh, students who are watching us we will be doing our session next friday at 7 pm and we would be covering ipm at iift so if you are aspiring ipm and iift you want to know more about please make sure the registration link is there in the chat box register and uh, i will see you next week thank you so much